I am so excited about this week's piece of furniture. This piece came to me as a gift from my dad's friend. Um, she started working on it. She worked on the top. She worked on some of the base. She painted some of the poles, which are not real brass. They're actually plated. There's a lot of repairs that need to be made on this piece. Now let's flip it. Step one is removing the paint from the top of the dresser. After 45 minutes, I come back to this. I'm super excited at this point because I know that she used furniture paint, so it's coming up so nice and easy. I made an in-depth tutorial on how I finished this top. If you wanna see that, I'll link it down in the description box below. For the top of this, I'm using Dixie Belle's No Pain Gel Stain in the color Golden Ash. When the first coat dried, I tried to move the piece and the top popped off. So I'm going to take out these nails, there's three of them, and I'm going to re-glue it and replace them. Once the wood filler dries and I have it sanded down, I add two more coats of the no pain gel stain. I wait two hours in between the coats. Because the front piece of this is already broken and damaged, I'm gonna take the whole thing out, remove all the nails, then put it back together again. I decided while I had it off, I might as well start cleaning the entire piece. So I'm using my Dixie Bell's White Lightning Cleaner in my spray bottle. I'm spraying it down and removing all the grime, all the gunk, just everything. And as I'm cleaning it, I can see some of the stain or the dye just coming down. You can see it on the table. So that tells me right there that I'm gonna need a blocking primer. Once the piece is clean, I can add the front piece back to it. So I'm using Type Bond wood glue, and then I'm gonna use my Ryobi Airstrike Air Nailer. Now I'm ready to prime the piece. So for the entire piece, I'm gonna cover everything except the top with Dixie Belle's Boss in clear. Boss is a blocking primer. It goes on this like milky white, but it ends up drying clear. I add two coats total of this. That gets rid of any odors, any tannins, any bleed through. I only wait about a half an hour in between coats of Boss. I could do it pretty quick. Now that I have the piece in the house, I'm using Dixie Belle's Mud in White to cover any of the cracks and the little holes and any of the damage that's on the drawer fronts. Once it's dry, I'll sand it flush.
Okay, I love sharing the inspiration because I know a lot of people are like, how do you come up with these ideas? Well, they're not always from my brain. I came across um, a picture on Pinterest a while ago and I saved it. Again, it's fashion, it's another dress. It's this. That is so beautiful to me. And I have been waiting and waiting for the right piece to come along. And then finally this piece came along and I think it's gonna be perfect. So I'm not gonna be able to like, you know, it's just inspiration. I'm not gonna be able to copy that dress onto this. I can't find the same colors. I mean, but we're gonna kind of do a blend with that vibe and the gold with the purples and maybe, I don't know, oranges. I have to go through my paints and see exactly what I have <laughs> and then try to, I don't know, try to figure it out. But I think we're gonna go from one side to the next and then I'm gonna come up with a bunch of gold. So let me get started. I'm starting with Dixie Bell's chalk mineral paint in the color Aubergine. Whenever I use the chalk mineral paint, I have the water mister in one hand and my brush in the other. I use them literally hand in hand um, to get such a smooth finish and a beautiful blend. Spritzing the water onto the paint, it, it works the best for me. And I don't really get brush strokes. So it just, it makes the paint flow so much better than without any water. I've decided to follow the curve of the dresser with the aubergine. And really quick, I did a little mock-up. These colors are not going to be the same colors I used, but just so I could remember the placement that I had in mind, I just do a little mock-up on Canva. My next color is going to be Muscadine Wine. This color is going to be the main color on the piece because the other colors I'm using when it's mixed with the Muscadine Wine will give me those warm oranges and yellows um, that we saw in the inspiration picture. And if you're enjoying this video, I would really, really love it if you hit that like button and considered subscribing because you know, it helps my channel so much. And here I'm just creating a line across the dresser so that I know where I want to stop with putting the muscadine wine so heavy. I don't want it to be as heavy through the bottom. I want that second half to be more orangey and yellowish. <laughs> so this is that little line was just a, a reminder for me. I've decided to use Colonial Mustard, and I'm not actually using it on its own. I'm gonna blend two other colors to make other colors, but 
colonial mustard is my base. So right now I'm going to mix colonial mustard with muscadine wine. And that's going to create this orangish, um, just warm color. And here's where I start pulling the muscadine wine into the colonial mustard, creating that, that warm orangish hue. And here's where we're going to add the last color, which is drop cloth. I'm going to mix the drop cloth with colonial mustard, but this time I'm going to pull the drop cloth into colonial mustard. Now, like I said at the beginning, the key to this blend is the muscadine wine. I'm adding just a hint of muscadine wine to blend all three of these colors. I didn't redip my paintbrush for this. I'm just using what's left on the brush to fade the colors together. Now that I like the way everything looks, I'm using a dry brush right now that I didn't dip in any paint. And I'm just making sure that everything is well blended that the colors look good, that there's no brush strokes, that we have a soft, even blend. And this is only the first coat. I have to repeat this process one more time. At this point, I'm like completely frustrated. Um, here's where it all went wrong. I started adding the gold and the gold just made it look cheap. You know, I love gold, love, love, love it. And, and I love the inspiration picture and I'm getting like completely fixated on this inspiration picture. It should look like the picture. Whose rule is that anyway, <laughs> right? Like, I, I don't know. But sometimes I get so stuck in the project. So what did I do? I started messaging my friends. Um, I have a group chat of some other really awesome uh, furniture flipping YouTubers. And I'm just kind of venting to them and I'm like, I am lost on this piece. I'm supposed to have it by next Wednesday. Like, you know, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I'm just freaking out. And Marissa, the very talented Marissa from Miss Flips says, wow, I love it. It looks like a stormy sunset. And, you know, and then I, we start tossing around other ideas, maybe some stenciling or, you know, with a, a couple other people, 
suggesting different things and I'm like, you know, I just need to stop for the day, think about all this and then I'll come back. Well, the next day goes by, I still don't know what I'm doing, but a stormy sunset, Marissa's words kept popping in my head. What I'm trying to do is make this thing pop with gold, you know, and brighten it up and make it look like a sunset, like in a, on a bright sunny day. Maybe that's not what it is. Maybe it's a stormy sunset, like she said. So what does that mean? That means dark. So then I think, well, how could I make these details pop? I decided to add my clear coat now. So I'm gonna add two coats of this satin clear coat on the entire piece. I decided to give some brown vesting wax a try on the piece. This ultimately led to my next step. Here's how I made the details really pop. I'm adding bronze gilding wax by Dixie Bell to all the raised details. And I decided to add a little bit of copper gilding wax too. Now for the hardware, I put all the hardware in a baggie and then added some citrus strip so that I could get rid of the rub and buff that was on there already. And don't forget to wear gloves when you're using citrus strip. Right away, I grabbed my gloves. <laughs> When everything was removed and the hardware was clean, I added some of that bronze gilding wax and then to touch up the raised details, I added some of the copper. Here's a reminder of what we had before, and here it is today. I've got to say, I think the blend is the star of this show. <laughs> if I would have added that gold, it would have just taken away from it. And on the sides, I did a solid two coats of the muscadine wine. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time with another furniture makeover.